Hello, Stuart Carroll here from Drone Film Guide, the channel where we learn to fly like filmmakers. Today we are talking about ND filters for your drone. It's a follow-up to an old ND filter video that we did. There's just so much confusion on this subject, I don't understand it. It's really not that hard, but there's so much bad information out there, it's unreal. So we're going to clear that all up for you and just, you know, for the avoidance of doubt, we've, we've totally not been paid to wear this t-shirt. I'm not going to go over everything that we talked about in the previous ND filter video, do check that out, the link is in the description below, but let's just do a quick overview of the definition and use of a neutral density filter. Here goes. Neutral density filters physically reduce the amount of light entering a camera, enabling you in bright conditions to set the correct shutter speed that gives you the motion blur the eyes are accustomed to seeing when watching movies at the cinema or on television. Did you follow all of that? Okay, <laughs> you can tell I memorized it. I wrote it down here because I just wanted to make it as eloquent and as precise and deliberate as possible, but let's break that down into the chunks. First up, ND filters physically reduce light entering the camera. Okay, so they're like a set of sunglasses or a set of sunglasses for someone with one eye. <laughs> this is an ND filter. It physically cuts down the amount of light getting into the camera sensor. It's as simple as that. Not much more to say on that subject. Part two, having physically reduced the amount of light entering the camera, we are now able to set the correct shutter speed. What is the correct shutter speed? According to the 180 degree rule, convention dictates that the shutter speed is double the frame rate. If you're shooting at 25 frames per second, you want a 1 50th of a second shutter speed. If you are shooting at 50 frames per second, you want a 100th of a second shutter speed. Now, if you're completely new to this, the DJI system, when you're selecting your shutter speed, uh, is depicted in terms of 50, 60, 80, 100, 200. That is actually one over that number. So 50 is 1 50th of a second, 100 is 100th of a second. It's the length of the time the shutter is open for. Part three, so you physically reduce the light entering the camera, you've got the correct shutter in bright conditions. Why do we say in bright conditions? Well, because more often than not, you will only use ND filters for video, at least in bright conditions, because if it was dark, you would probably be able to achieve the correct shutter speed without the use of an ND filter. Part four, the motion blur the eye is accustomed to seeing. This is the entire point of the exercise and in video at least, it is the only point of ND filters is to allow you to achieve motion blur. What is motion blur? This is motion blur. If I freeze one of those frames and play it over the top of the image there, you will see that you cannot see all of my fingers. There is blur around my hand there. That is what you want to see. If you are standing in the streets and a car flies past, are you able to read the numbers on the number plate? No, you're not. Your eye is not able to track that much information to allow you to take that level of detail when something moves past you at speed. There is blur. And as a videographer, a film creator, whatever, you want to replicate real life as best as you can when you're capturing it on video. We're trying to depict reality here and you want things to look on the screen like they look in real life and that is why motion blur is so important. Without it, the image can look jaggy and stuttery and it just doesn't quite look right. So in video, that is the sole purpose of a neutral density filter, to cut the light to enable you to get the correct shutter speed and bright conditions to give you the motion blur the eye is accustomed to seeing. We want motion blur, we want to depict reality as best we can on our film. It is not a way of adding saturation to your colours, it's not a way of getting better footage, enabling you to shoot the sun and not get a blown out sky, it's nothing like that. All it does is physically darken the image with the byproduct of allowing you to get motion blur. Let me just take a wee second to give our 8 hour drone cinematography masterclass a plug. Alina and I created this thing over the winter and it grew arms and legs and became this beast of a piece of work where we just cover everything to do with filmmaking with drones. We focus on the filmmaking side of things, the cinematography more so than the technical side. So it's kind of unique, it's a bit different and it's received some fantastic feedback and a lot of sales in the last two months that we've had it out. If you click on the link in the description below you'll receive a discount and it also has a 30 day money back guarantee on it so there's not really any downside to checking it out. So do take a look at that. 
I would also like to thank our sponsors. You can't really have missed it. They didn't tell me to wear this. It's just a bit of fun and it adds some color to this video. But it's really cool that the channel is attracting some sponsorship because that gives us the resources to continue to create these videos for free essentially for you guys <laughs> and to stay motivated and stay interested in, in what we do. Everyone knows SanDisk. If you own a digital camera, of course you know SanDisk. But nonetheless, they make some pretty cool stuff. That's a 500 gig solid state hard drive. It's perfect. I mean, if you're traveling, you, you drop it, you stick it in your bag. There's no moving parts. You can't go wrong with that. Probably even better is this, which you can plug an SD card or a micro SD card into uh, without having to take your computer to back up footage. So that's ideal as well. I'm sitting in Portugal now, so something like this is great. Where I'm sitting doesn't have a safe. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's secure, but nonetheless, if you're going around somewhere a little bit more dodgy, <coughs> Thailand, where we had our camera stolen, <coughs> then you might want to consider something like that. Okay, moving on. Now we've had a recap, you know what indie filters are, you know what they do, and you know why in all likelihood you will want to use them. Let's go over a bunch of other things. Firstly, neutral density filters and polarizing filters are not the same thing. It's really confusing because when you buy some NDs, it's possible that they'll come in a pack with some polarizers. More confusingly than that, the polarizer also has a light reducing function, so it's an ND polarizer. And yeah, if, if, this is, if this is your first time, second time, or third time using these things, it is a bit of a uh, merry-go-round in your head for that kind of stuff. We're only talking about neutral density filters. Polarizers serve a completely different function. They reduce glare on reflective surfaces, so they're quite good for filming water. They increase saturation in colors, particularly in skies and such like, but they're really, really hard to use on drones, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, so we're gonna cover that in a completely different video and we're gonna leave it at that for now. Second of all, not all ND filters are created equal. Now, I haven't tested all the brands and all this kind of stuff, but we have used ND filters before that have completely ruined the colors of our image. And that's quite tricky when you're mixing your drone footage with other cameras and all that kind of stuff. You kind of don't want that weird greeny, purpley color casts and all that kind of stuff. The filters that we use, and we were sent these by Polar Pro, but we've been using them for some time and they're very, very nice. They are the Cinema Series Polar Pro ND filters, I think that's what they're called. They have a cheaper range as well, these are the more expensive, but they're not that dear and uh, they're perfect. You wouldn't know any difference between using them and not using them in terms of your colors, in terms of your sharpness, in terms of unwanted glare, reflections, all that kind of stuff. So if you're even gonna consider using ND filters, use good ones because I'm not saying cheap ones will ruin your shot, but bad ones will ruin your shot. Haven't tested them all, but these ones are pretty good. Third up, what ND filter do you use? Right, I've just told you you need to buy some expensive ND filters, but I'm going to save you a little bit of money now. Instead of necessarily going out and buying the full suite of ND filters, I would say, if my memory serves me correctly, you can go on the Polar Pro website and make a custom selection of ND filters. I would say buy the 16, the 32, and the 64. If you live in a place with bright light, you know, some sunshine, which I know a lot of you living in America, Australia, uh, where a lot of our viewers are, you do. You're going to need an ND64 on a bright day. We've been out shooting, we've had a great run of weather in Scotland, and we've been out shooting quite a lot with the ND64. It's, you know, it, even then it only just cuts out enough light. As soon as the sun goes behind the cloud, maybe you drop it down to a 32 or a 16, but I haven't really seen many situations where I've gone below that. So that would be my recommendation in that respect. As for knowing there and then what ND filter to put on, well, first of all, first tip, you don't have to fly the drone to find out what ND filter to put on. Do the tests on the ground, you know. That's got an ND64 on it at the moment. Hold it up to roughly where you're planning on flying, check your monitor, check your phone, see what kind of exposure you're getting, and change accordingly. Second of all, there's a Polar Pro app, which is pretty handy for um, giving you the light conditions, so you can type in some of the details there, and it helps you and guides you as to what ND filter you might want to use. Uh, and third of all, pretty quickly you'll work out, roughly speaking, what ND filter you need to use. So if you go out on a bright day, you know, you know you're going to need a 64. If you go out on a dull day, you maybe try the 16 first. If that's not enough, you put the 32 on. It's a little bit of trial and error, a little bit of experience, but there are some tools there to help you along the way. 
Fourth, this is an important one, use manual exposure settings in both photo and video if you are using ND filters. If you use auto settings, the DJI Go app will think it's very, very dark and it will crank up the ISO and it will do everything it can to let as much light into the sensor as possible because it doesn't realise you've put an ND filter on the camera. So you need to get comfortable using manual exposure settings. If you don't know how to do that, we've got other videos and all that kind of stuff, but for now just know that you stay away from auto if you are using ND filters. Fifth, ND filters are not just for video, they are principally for video uh, because 99.9% .9 of the time in photography you will not use an ND filter, however slow shutter speed photography is a thing, it's a great thing, I love it, it's really cool, you get some really cool effects. It's a little bit tricky to do on a drone because generally speaking when you're doing slow shutter photography you lock the camera off on a tripod to make sure there's no movement in the camera but we've got some great results using up to one fifth of a second shutter with the Mavic Air it was uh, and you'll see the waterfall picture that we've put up or that I'll put up now so we'll talk about that in some other videos at some point but uh, yeah, you can use them for photography, but more often than not, you're going to use them for video. Number six, when to not use ND filters. So, three parts to this. First part is in changeable weather conditions or when you have time pressure. The kind of obvious issue here is that you're standing on the ground controlling your drone and your drone plus ND filter are in the air. If a cloud passes in front of the sun and you have your ND64 on, you're going to find that you have a very, very, very dark image and you're not going to be able to do anything about it. You can't put the ISO up to brighten the image on this drone because you will ruin it by introducing far too much noise into the image and you can't stop down on the aperture because these things have a fixed aperture anyway. With the exception of the Phantom 4 Pro, that's maybe a different story, but even then, I'm sure you could run into problems there as well. That's a big issue. The second part of that is if you have changeable weather conditions and you're under time pressure, then you just really can't afford to use ND filters. So I'll give you an example. We shoot a lot of weddings. We do a lot of drone shots at weddings. There's never enough time. There's always time pressure on that kind of stuff. And we can't afford, especially if we're doing a couple shoot, we're doing some really cool shots with a couple, we can't afford to say to them, oh, hang on there a second, I need to get the drone back down and change an ND filter. Even though what you're doing is perfectly reasonable, it looks ridiculous and it makes you look unprofessional and it takes too long and etc, etc, etc. The chances are a lot of you doing drone work is a little bit more deliberate and a little bit more um, planned maybe than some of our wedding shoots, but nonetheless, time pressure and changeable weather conditions, we just don't use ND filters. The second part of this relates to motion blur. We're trying to create motion blur. Now, what if there's no motion in your shot? Does it really matter if there's motion blur? Well, it can't matter because there's no motion. The motion blur that happens in between each frame will not be noticeable because there's no motion. So, in that kind of situation, if you know that you're shooting a shot that will not have any motion in it, then you don't have to bother using an ND filter. No one can tell. It doesn't make any difference whatsoever. The only time you can tell if an ND filter has not been used is if there is motion in the shot. In drone cinematography, motion comes in two ways. Whether the subject is moving, so that's me moving, that creates motion and you get some motion blur, as we've already discussed. The other way that you get motion blur on a drone shot is if the camera itself is moving. So you could be shooting a static subject, but if the camera is looping around the subject, around the perimeter of the frame, there's going to be quite a lot of motion, even if what's in the centre of the frame is static. So you want to have the correct motion blur there, or it can look quite jaggy around the edge of the frame. However, coming back to my original point, if you're shooting something with no motion, then it doesn't really matter if there's no motion blur. The caveat to that, and I've got a couple of examples of it, you could be shooting a nice landscape shot and a bird flies past. If you're shooting a landscape shot at one two thousandth of a second on a nice bright sunny day, a bird flies past, you know, the discerning eye is going to tell that you're using the wrong shutter speed. So again, depending on what kind of client you're doing this for, or what the end goal is here, you want to consider using ND filters. A third scenario where you might want to consider not using an ND filter is if you're planning on taking stills from your video footage. That's something that we do a lot. Uh, we use it for Instagram, we use it for Facebook, all that kind of stuff. If you want to take stills out, you probably don't want motion blur. Uh, and still is a photograph after all. Photographs 99.9% .9 of the time you don't want motion blur. So in that scenario, if you know you're going to be taking stills, give the ND filter a miss and you'll have some nice crisp images from which to pull your stills. I'm going to add in a fourth time that you might not want to use an ND filter. And this one is 
super advanced, super nuanced and super niche. But if you are planning on using post-production software to slow down your footage, to give you slow motion or super slow motion, you don't want to use ND filters. You don't want the motion blur. In Final Cut Pro, we have a thing called optical flow. So you can slow down real-time footage to like 1% or 2% or 3% of the original speed. And what it does is it artificially creates frames in between the actual frames that were captured on the memory card. It's a very, very clever way of doing things. There's a third party software as well called Twixter, which is a plugin for the likes of Premiere Pro, Final Cut, I think there might be some others as well. It's something that we do quite a lot. It works better when there's no motion blur because the software needs to kind of find the contrast and find the edges in every single frame to be able to create new frames in between those frames. Super geeky, super nuanced, but it's something you might want to consider. Maybe we'll do a tutorial on it at another time. But it is a technique that we use, and if we know we're going to be slowing something down, then we'll give the ND filters a miss. I think we've covered everything there is there to say about ND filters. They're really not that complicated, but I can see why confusion arises, so hopefully that's cleared up some of that. If you have any comments or additions, please leave them below. I learn a lot from what you say. I think a lot of viewers learn a lot from what you say and it really does help. So uh, do interact with us below. As always, don't forget to subscribe, join our mailing list so you can be the first to know about new videos and don't forget to check out our eight hour drone cinematography masterclass if you really want to get into this stuff and get into some detail. Until next time, happy flying.